he will sit down. And coming up will be Javier Marty Carena. So he couple. reached on an error and he singled. A couple of strikeouts now for David Dinelli. And uh, three strikeouts on the game. Two of them coming back to back here. He got Wallace to end the fourth. And now he gets Calderon leading off the fifth. So it looks like he's starting to settle it down a bit. Okay. Marty Carina hitting 282 coming in here. And he's one for two. He seems to be, his bat seems to be warming up recently. Outside for a ball. And it's 1-0. and oh. <laughs> Some fans getting on the umpires. Mark <laughs> Beller getting an earful. <laughs> 1-0 count to Marty Carena and the 1-0 pitch. Swung on, and this is hit high and foul to the right side. The first baseman goes over. He thinks he has a play. Does anyone? No. It's into the grandstand, and that'll be just a long, high strike, and it's 1-1. One and one. Well, You hear the, the earful. I can hear the earful that Mark. Mark Beller is taken behind the play. We always say, like, are you sure you want to play catcher? Are you sure you want to be an umpire? <laughs> yeah. 1-1 one, one count. I mean, you talk about the thankless job. I mean, the best thing that you can do is go completely unnoticed. Yeah, that's, that's true. Although I, I think there's a level of respect for the people who are willing to do it. People have for them, but that respect goes out the window when... <laughs> There's a disagreement on their uh, their calls, but that's you know that's the way life is. Here's the pitch high for a ball. It's two balls and one strike to Marty Carena. One out here, top of the fifth and six to nothing. Diamonds. But then again, when you go when you look back at sports and you say, like, who remembers the referee or the umpire unless they made a really bad call in a really important game? <laughs> That's the only time they ever get remembered. Marty Carina hits this ball to short center field. Back goes the shortstop. Kriakos, he makes the catch. He was, yeah, he kind of hesitated. That there have been some high pop-ups uh, here in Vallejo. I don't know why anything would be different in Vallejo, but taking a while for these balls to come down from the sky. Right now, it is not. The lights are kind of starting to have an effect. The sun is set. Uh, and that was not up in any dark sky like we had last night. We are having break out the barrel here. Two out, nobody on. Here's the pitch to Bautista. They say you can't go home again. Well, here he is, second game where he used to play, <laughs> hit by a pitch, and a ground out. Last night he had a big, a big hit in his first at bat. Here's the pitch inside, two balls and no strikes now to Gerald Bautista. So right now, uh, in the bottom of the eighth inning, I don't want to start scoreboard watching, but let me tell you the Pacifics are leading the Stompers <laughs> three to two. <laughs> I don't want to, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. I can't control myself. <laughs> Here's the pitch. It's a strike. And that's exactly the truth because I've been sitting here saying, why don't I look at that score? Why don't I look at that score? And I say, no, no, no. And even though it's only a one game in, we're rooting against the stopper. I mean, let's just be honest. Well, I know we're rooting against I, yes, the stopper. You know, nothing personal. <laughs> Here's a pitch. This ball is hit to center field and deep. Back goes Clark. Clark to the warning track. Clark to the wall. Clark watches it go out of the place. A home run for Bautista. Hello, Vallejo. And he's got another big hit in game number two back home. And this makes it seven to nothing. Gerald Bautista ripping that one. Going opposite field a little bit over the right center field fence. And that ball just kept going and going. And the way Clark was after it there for a while, Scott, I thought as if at least that he thought he had right. a play. But he quickly ran out of room. And how about that? An RBI triple last night for Bautista. And now a home run here today to make it 7 to nothing as the Diamonds start pouring it on. High for a ball, 1-0 and to McKeon. That was to the deepest part of the ballpark, really, and Clark kept running and running right, and it looked like he thought he had the catch, uh, potential to catch. 
and it just kept going. And you, the flag over Clark's head in center field is blowing to that right center field area. Maybe he got a little boost. Who knows? But Bautista gets a home run, and it's 7 to nothing. The next pitch to McKeon is a ball, and it's 2-0. Oh. So, Tonelli was that close to getting his first 1-2-3 inning of the game, but Bautista's having none of that. McKeon high, pop-up, right side, and foul ground. The first baseman, Rodriguez, comes over and makes the play. So that will end the inning, but Gerald Bautista with a very loud home run to right center field, and the Diamonds are now leading 7 to nothing. No more. <laughs> Welcome back to the bottom of the fifth inning here in uh, Vallejo. And the inning is being held up by a tie in the hot dog eating contest that was being held here between innings. I can tell you that there was a Pittsburgh contestant in that hot dog eating contest who looked like he was going to run away with the championship and somehow... Uh, under the odd Vallejo scoring rules they have, the Pittsburgh guy loses again. <laughs> Poor Bodie. Only in Vallejo would you, the home of Joey Chestnut, have a hot dog eating contest, go to an extra frame. How about that? The dancing contest between uh, Bodie, the, the uh, bat boy for the Diamonds, and another contestant here. The crowd seemed to choose Bodie, but they, uh, they, then the award was given to the Vallejo kid. And now the hot dog eating contest, the Pittsburgh guy's kicking butt, but and then it ends up in a tie. They won, they won overtime. All right, Chevy Clark, who got the honor of watching Batista's home run leave the building, will now step up here and bat at the bottom of the fifth inning. It's now 7 to nothing Pittsburgh. Mike Gunn says, boy, I got a lot of runs behind me, and comes at the plate. Swing and a miss, a strike, and it's a 1-1. Clark struck out looking the first time he was up here. Part of that, just a great series of names on this Vallejo team. The best names in the league. <laughs> and Chevy Clark definitely is one of them. Here's the pitch. A strike and it's own two. Uh -huh. 
Look at the Diamonds bullpen, and there's Aaron Miles saying, I may not have won the argument, but it looks like I'm going to win the war so far. <laughs> <laughs> Six to nothing, Diamonds. Swing and a miss, strike three, and Clark sees three pitches. Not very well, apparently, and he swings and misses. <laughs> Four strikeouts for Mike Gunn on the ball game, and he has been very tough to handle. Face four in the first, one, two, three in the second. Face four more in the third, one, two, three in the fourth. Gets the first man here. So just a couple of guys over the minimum so far for Mike Gunn. He's been very impressive, and the Diamond offense, of course, has staked him to a touchdown lead. His first pitch here to Durkee. That's outside for a ball. It's 1-0. and This is the Mike Gunn the Diamonds were always expecting, which is why he was the opening day pitcher in the first half of the season. And he is so far so good right now as we go into the bottom of the fifth with one out. He likes to sign and comes to the plate. And I think it's a fastball, and it almost takes Turkey's head off. He gets out of the way, and it's 2-0. and The Diamonds looking for... That stability in the starting staff, and the more guys that you can get, as we had a good look at Mike right there, then uh, if they do have some problems in the bullpen, then one of those good starters could go to the bullpen and kind of bolster the uh, the bottom part of the staff they, and could really be a huge boost for the Diamonds in the second half. They have uh, done that, of course, used some of their starters as relievers and to great success, but not... But not in a repeated fashion. can't do it in a repeated fashion because obviously they're starters. They've had a couple people come in who were expecting some work in the bullpen anyway to come in and throw live games. Pitch is grounded to the right side of Aldez. There's a couple hops into his glove and he throws them out. The, uh, like tonight, if you were going to bring in a starting pitcher... Um, Dennis Neal is probably a, a candidate. He did not have a very good outing his last time. And, but uh, right now, Mike Gunn is not making any indication that there is a need for a relief pitcher. He's got two outs here in the fifth inning. Seven to nothing is the Diamonds' lead. And the relief pitchers, if Gunn keeps going, might start to protest because we got a complete game last night from Blackley. <laughs> and... Uh, if Gunn goes all the way, then they might get a little tired of sitting on the bench. Here's a pitch, a ball. It's 1-0. We're a long way from all the way, though. We're only in the fifth inning here in Vallejo. A lovely night on the Delta, where the Delta and the Bay come together. <laughs> that pitch bounces up there, and it's 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Gun off the mound for a second, getting his clothing, his hat, his glove all squared away. Now I'm going to walk up to that rubber and get ready to go. 2 0 count. The 2 0 pitch. Swung on a miss, strike one. Fernacci was put out by Galetti, his only time up back in the third inning. We now discover that there are two members of the lineup who have these light blue batting helmets. The pitch, that is low for a ball. Did he swing? They say no, and so it's going to be three and one. It definitely looked like he held up on that one. They appealed down to Danny Speck from the field umpire who's in good position to see it. He said no way. But nope. Two balls and one, three balls and one strike. To Fernacci here. And the 3-1 pitch is high and inside for ball four. And Michael Gunn walks Fernacci here with two down. That will bring up the number nine hitter, Vladimir Gomez. He's had a, uh, a tough time of it out there in second base. He, I remember against uh, Valdez early on, he got a very high hop. He made a beautiful play, a, a barehanded grab of the ball in his attempt to throw him out. But the hop was too high, and he was not able to make the play. Or get Valdez in time. That went to a hit. Uh, later in the game, he makes a good play, coming over to pick up the ball. And a short throw to the first baseman that Rodriguez dropped. And that later counted for a run as Galetti knocked 
got an RBI, so he's up here at the plate. He walked his first time up in the third. The pitch from Gunn is a ball, and it's 1-0. and Fernacci at first base, seven to nothing. I don't, I don't know if there is a strategy for base runners in seven to nothing. <laughs> don't get picked off. <laughs> don't get picked off, right? Don't give up outs on the bases when you're down by this much. That pitch is a strike, and it's one ball and one strike now to Gomez, with Fernacci at first, two down here in the bottom of your fifth inning. Fernacci has stolen twice and been caught stealing twice. This pitch to Gomez is swung on and fouled away, and the count now goes to one and two. It's been a while since Gunn's been ahead in the count, so he must probably enjoy this. They're joking about that collision repair, but my uh, car is parked over there. <laughs> Good decision. Yeah, well, in fact, I was warned by one of the Diamonds coaches. He probably should park there. I said, well, uh, it's a rental anyway. <laughs> One, two count. Still like to be able to see out of the windshield when you drive yeah, home. Exactly. The one, two pitch is swung on him. Missed strike three. Gomez will sit down, and that's the end of five innings here. The Diamonds have a seven to nothing lead. Any number six will now begin here in Vallejo. They just finished that hot dog eating contest, and yes, the Pittsburgh contestant was undermined by Vallejo judging. <laughs> he looked like he was out in front, such a huge lead in the last round, and all of a sudden they declare a tie. But that's what happens. And then, uh, but we did say, I have to say that I said when that started, never bet against the skinny guy, and the skinny guy won. <laughs> in a hot dog eating contest, they just they just know how to get it finished. 
Garcia steps Did Aaron up. Miles register a complaint? <laughs> there was no complaint, but he was, he was not listed as a designated eater on the lineup. Here's a pitch from Garcia to Garcia, and he fouls it back right at us. No balls and a strike to Jose, who uh, has come up here tonight and got the first run of the game after a single, and then he struck out and grounded out. So Garcia just uh, 514 ERA, small sample size, four games so far, seven innings pitched. He's the new right-handed pitcher for these Admirals, and he throws to Garcia, and it's one-on-one. And came over from the Florence Freedom, where he got into five games. Just pitched a handful of innings with the Freedom. They're not the Philadelphia Freedom. They're the someone else's Freedom. <laughs> there is a good trivia question you can ask people. What was the Philadelphia Freedom? No one will ever get that. And who was that song about? Wasn't there like a soccer team or something like that? The song was about Billie Jean King and the Philadelphia Freedom were a women's tennis league team. Ah, like the Los Angeles Strings and the Golden Gators? Yes. This pitch is a high bounder to the third baseman. Frenacci waits, throws, and gets in. Not easy to do when the runner is Garcia, and that was a good play by the third baseman. And that's one away here in the sixth inning. Now, Fernacci's looked good at third base tonight. He's handled some tough uh, chances and handled them extremely well. Ones where he's had to wait and be patient, ones where he's had to hurry. And he's been able to take care of all his chances without incident tonight. This is Omar Valdez's game tonight, and everybody else is just his participant. <laughs> he, he has walked and gotten to third. He has tripled with the... Base is loaded, driving in three runs. He reached base on air and scored. This ball's fouled away, and it's 0-1. And he has scored. He has scored two runs. He's driven in three, and he is one for two on the night batting. An 0-1 count on him here with one out. Top of the sixth inning and seven to nothing. Pittsburgh, the pitch is high, and it's a ball 1-1. One, one. Eli Garcia on the mound, second pitcher for the Admirals. After Dinelli gave up seven runs. Went just five innings. Not all those runs earned, but set up by those free passes. Here's the pitch, to the right side, right at the first baseman, and boy, could that be an easier play. <laughs> Just a nice little hop into your glove, and two steps, you step on the bag, and boom. Two outs, B.J. Gwynn steps up here. At least if you're the Admirals now, you look at uh, your relief pitching last night. Gervasio picked up the save, gave up a run, but uh, the other guy is doing very well, Jones and Banks. And now Garcia coming out of the bullpen. couple outs. The pitch to Gwen is a strike, and it's oh, no balls and one strike. I like to have a situation where you can depend on your bullpen to get you through some games, keep you in some games, and give you a chance to come back in games where you trail like 7 to nothing. Next pitch to Gwen, he swings and fouls it away, and quickly he's down in the count, no balls and two strikes. Omar Valdez has had some big hits, but the biggest hit of the night was Gerald Bautista with the towering home run that kept going and going to the deepest part of Wilson Park here in Vallejo, over the fence, and a home run, a solo shot for him, and that's what made it 7 to nothing. Garcia winds and delivers. The pitch is swung on a miss by Gwynn. Well, we talk about timely hitting being such an important part of baseball. And Odomar's two outs, two strikes, bases loaded. They're, they have a chance to get out of the inning with no run score, trailing only by one to nothing. And then, bam, <laughs> you're, right. down by, you're down by five. It's an entirely different ball game when he stopped running and stood up at third base. That pitch is high for a ball to Gwynn. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes. Two down here in the 
sixth inning. The Diamonds have not gone down. One, two, three. Garcia trying to make that happen. Here's the pitch. It's slow for a ball, and it's two and two. And yes, in this half inning, I will scoreboard watch again <laughs> and see what the Stompers are doing. <laughs> Might as well just, just admit that that's the way it's going to be this time. <laughs> it's just fouled away, and it st- kind of stays at 2-2. Two and two. Well, their reputation precedes them because even though it's so early and we don't know how it's going to turn out, you, you start rooting for one team, and it's the other team that you're not – rooting you know the team that you're rooting against you want them to lose because they're the big rival and it turns out they come up as a dud i mean yeah. come into this season you're thinking the giants are going to be a lot better right doesn't happen you think the cubs are going to be great oh, the cubs, well, has anything Not been, been overplayed like the cubs they just swung out of this strike three call strike three gwen will sit down and yes that is a one two three inning for eli garcia the first one the admirals have had tonight and we're going to the bottom of the sixth the bottom line is different the score is pittsburgh seven and the Vallejo Admirals, nothing. How much hard is left in gun is really the question as we go into the sixth inning. The pitch is a strike. It's 0-1. You could say, how many more bullets does gun, gun have gun left? Have? That's right. God, how <laughs> did I come up with that faster than you? I never come I, up with I that I shy away from you. it sometimes because okay. I just think, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but, he, you know, he, the third Give batter. some of the glory. You, is that what it is? Tony, you, the, here's a pitch. It's outside for a ball. It's 1-1. The, the third batter is blank in this inning. So you got time. <laughs> gun, blank, something. Oh, something, Lord. something, gun, something, blank, something, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it should be comedic, uh, comedic uh, gold, but I have nothing. One, one count. The pitch is fouled away, and the count goes to one and two. Williams hitting that ball off to the right side. Former diamond. Stepping up here. He was on those teams with Mike Taylor and some other guys you'll see around the league. 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2 one, pitch, I'm sorry. A strike three called, and that will be the end of this at-bat for Brandon Williams. Now batting for the Admiral, shortstop number 20, David Kiriakos. 
Now the shortstop for the Admirals. Kyriakos comes in here. He did that. He does that thing. He does that. He sits his right foot down in that batter's box and swings his hips back and forth. <laughs> gets in there. He gets his whole body loose before he faces that first pitch from Gunn, which is probably not a bad idea. Outside for a ball. And McKeon made a big catch of those. They just announced this here, and I looked at it, and I, was, I just wasn't quite ready emotionally to mention <laughs> <laughs> that the Stompers and the Pacifics are in extra innings tied up at three. Here's a pitch. That ball is, out, is outside for two balls and a strike. We're going to Sonoma this weekend. We'll be there for a 6 o'clock start, as we understand it, every night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, on the air at 5.50 with Runs, Hits, Aaron, our pregame show with manager Aaron Miles, 5.50 every evening. Every evening. We hope you'll join us. And then join us out in Winter, she uh, hello. Winter Chevrolet Park next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This pitch is bound to left side, into left field, base hit for Kiriakos as it gets by Garcia. You know, we're sitting here, breaks up the no I didn't even realize it was a no-hitter. <laughs> That's a base hit for Kyriakos, which was the first hit of the night for the night for the uh, for the Admirals. It was. Wow. So Gunn plowing through this lineup now gives up a, a base hit that was hugged the ground and got by Garcia. It was hit well. It was not one of those that just happened to make it into the outfield. It was hit well. A strong base hit for Kyriakos. He's on there with one out now, and the first pitch to blank is a bullet <laughs> first, but it's a ball, one and out. Oh, one hit, six strikeouts, <coughs> just a handful over the minimum for Mike Gunn. Going like crazy here, and now he's got a base runner to contend with. He throws, this pitch is swung on a missed, and that was, that was all Mike Gunn. Good looking fastball right there, able to throw it right by him. One ball and one strike. The Diamonds, of course, hoping for the double play. Pretty good crowd here tonight, too, Scott, for a, a weeknight. Blank is the catcher, so you would expect a double play. It wouldn't be too difficult. That pitch is a ball, and it's two balls and a strike. <coughs> Blank out of the batter's box. Gun off the rubber. Now to the top of the mound. 2-1 count. He agrees on the pitch they want to throw. And here it comes. Swung on a bound to the right side. That's going to go into right field. The base hit. Kiriakos goes to second, and he will hold on there. And now he'll go on to third as the ball just gets past uh, Calderon in right field somehow. Uh, Calderon came in, had a beat on that ball, and somehow he did not pick it up. And that allowed Kiriakos to move on to third base. And now... Nick Akins is going to come to the plate with runners at first and third and one out. So an error will be charged to Calderon, so a no-hitter going into the inning through five and a third. And now Kiriakos and Blank back-to-back -back base hits here. And here comes Akins now with a chance of one swing of the bat to cut pretty deeply into this seven-run lead. For just when you think it was safe... <laughs> Gunn moving along, strikes out the first batter. And then he gets a, a good base hit from Kiriakos in the left field by Garcia. Didn't have a play, to play, play on it. And then the Diamonds are in double play position, which means Valdez is playing closer to second base than he usually would. And that was one of the reasons that ball got into right field. And then it gets past Calderon, not a whole bunch, but enough for Kiriakos, who might have gone to third anyway on a ground ball to the right. He stopped, but then he went again when the ball got past Calderon. Yeah. This ball's fouled away, and it's 0-1. You have to charge J.Q. with an error because Kiriakos had clearly decided he was going to stay at second base. Then when he saw the ball trickle away, he raced on over to third. That could be a big play here with less than two outs. The Diamonds still hoping for a double play. Akins up here with an 0-1 count. The 0-1 pitch is swung on a miss and a strike two. Of course, the Admiral's not thinking right now, Scott, about a one-run inning. Yeah. They're looking to put a crooked number right up there in this inning here, and they've got the guy to do it with uh, runners on base and Nick Akins. Bottom of the sixth inning, 7 to nothing Pittsburgh, and that ball is high and at Akins' head, and he bounds, bends out of the way, and it's 1-2.
So it's one ball, two strike count. Third base, Kiriakos. First base blank. This pitch is a ball. It gets away for a moment from McKeon, but only to the bounds out to the home plate. So no chance for Kiriakos to come home. 2-2 two, two count. One out. You know, the first real stress inning for Mike Gunn. Feeling a lot better about things because he has that seven-run lead. So even with a guy like this up here, the big lead, you can't be afraid to challenge in a situation like this. 2-2 two, two count here. The 2-2 two, two pitch. Strike three called, and Akins will sit down. Well, that's the second time in this game that Akins has been called out on strikes. And as he walks back to the dugout, he's got something to say. <laughs> I'm not sure what he was saying. He's still saying something. He's still talking his way back to the dugout. And he, uh, that's asking to be thrown out of the game, but he has not been tossed. Well, Ryan a... Rodriguez will come to the plate now, and the Admirals... <coughs> But last best hope to get some runs out of this, this threat that they've created here in this sixth inning. Kind of one of those situations, Scott. Are they going to have a chance to win this game? You figure they have to push across a couple now. All right, this pitch is low for a ball. It's 1-0. Rodriguez up here with runners at the corners, and now two down. Mike Gunn came into this inning, had not given up a hit. And then he gave up two in a row. That's why we have runners at first and third with two outs. Two have struck out in the inning as well. That pitch, a ball, and it's 1-0, 2-0. He checked his swing. They did not ask for a check on whether he had gone <coughs> through with it. So the count is 2-0. and Guns 2-0 pitch. That's a strike, and it's two balls and one strike. Diamonds are deep in the outfield, straight away. Normal in the infield, except Galetti is holding on blank at first base. There you see Kiriakos with his lead off of third. Here's a pitch from Gunn, and that's outside for ball three, and now he's a pitch away from loading them up. Yeah, three balls on the strike here. You got Chevy Clark up next. He struck out twice tonight. But do you really want to put more guys on base and give the Admirals with that one big swing a chance to get right back in this game? Here's a 3-1 pitch from Gunn. It's a ball, ball four, and that will load them up. And yeah, the Diamonds bullpen looks like it's gotten started down there, Scott. Chevy Clark comes up to the plate. With the bases loaded, he has struck out twice. Uh, and that, of course, would be a good indication for the Diamonds on how he is going. Tonight, but on the year, Clark has four home runs and 16 RBIs. The Diamonds are leading seven to nothing. Clark, with one swing of the bat, could cut that lead by more than half. The Diamonds had this situation with Valdez up, and he tripled. Here's a pitch to Clark outside a ball. It's one out, and the Diamonds have people up in the bullpen. It looks like Justin Lawrence is throwing. Even though it's seven to nothing, all of a sudden you got the bases loaded. Figured this is where those games have been before can, when yeah. the Admirals came back, when the Diamonds had huge leads, eight runs, ten <coughs> runs, and, and suddenly and they lost one of those games. I remember this ball down the left side, base hit. No, it's off Garcia's glove into left field. One run comes in to score, and that will break the shutout, but everybody else will hold. And Garcia over there to get that ball, his glove may have saved a run. I'm not sure, but it certainly, I don't think that was going to, that was going to be a hit. Regardless, Garcia made a great play to get some leather on the ball. Into score comes Kiriakos. Everybody moves up a base. The bases remain loaded. Here comes Grayland Durkee. Now Aaron Miles will come out to the mound. Mike Gunn came into this inning. He had not given up a base hit. And... Uh, he has now given up three. 
all of them bounding balls through the infield, but still, there were clear base hits. And he is now here with the gun, has the bases loaded. Aaron Miles is having a conversation with Gunn and the infield, and he has not made any call for a reliever to come into the game. So he is probably going to stay with Gunn. He leaves the mound. He waits. He's got perfect timing. You know, he sometimes will wait for that umpire to come out to break it all up, and he basically gets right to the mound and then stops talking. <laughs> There's Aaron headed back to the dugout on BayAreaSports.tv if you're watching us. Being streamed live here. We'll all be back here tomorrow night, uh, BayAreaSports.tv and Mixler.com. You can join us, of course, by logging in with us through the website. You don't even have to log in. Just uh, click in. No logging. Just clicking. <laughs> Two outs. Bottom of the sixth. One run in. It is seven to one. Durkee with a very open stance. The left-handed batter swings and bounces to the right side. Right at ball. There's a big hop. He gets it and goes to second for the out. Oh, my God, he almost had that ball hop over his head when it hit the, the dirt part of the infield, and it bounced high, and he was able to leap up and grab it and step on second for the out, and that keeps the implosion to one run here, and at the end of six innings, the score is the Pittsburgh Diamond 7, Vallejo 1. One lead here as we go to the seventh inning, and they can thank the athleticism of Odomar Valdez for that. A leaping grab of a bad hop to keep it from going to the outfield and would have scored at least two runs with everybody running on contact. And so it is still 7-1. to one. We've got, we got a lot of action until we get to the bottom end of this one. We know that's for, <laughs> that's for sure. And here to take us the rest of the way is the voice of the Diamonds, Tony Schultz. All right. Thank you, Scott. So Odomar Valdez involved in the two key moments in this game, one offensively and one defensively for Odomar. And the pitch now to the Diamond leading off the inning as he takes a strike is Vinny Galetti and a couple of RBIs in the ball game for Vinny. So Galetti, Wallace, Calderon, and the Diamonds, you think it's 7-1 to one lead, sounds secure. Think again, that was very close to being a crooked number for Vallejo in that last half inning. There's a strike to Vinny in the count, nothing in two. So Odomar in the second inning. 
Bases loaded, two strikes, two outs. Comes up with the three RBI triple that made it four nothing at the time. And then in that last half inning, came up with a bad hop ground ball off the bat of Durkee. This one's high and outside for a ball, which, uh, as Scott alluded to, would have easily scored two runs and would have continued the inning. And instead, Odomar was able to stay with it, get the four unassisted put out as Gerke grounds into the fielder's choice, or who knows, that inning could still be going, and that 7-1 uh, to one lead would certainly be in jeopardy. Here's the pitch, and that's outside there, and the count. Two balls and two strikes to Vinny. Well, this sees the usual <clears throat> bounding ball coming towards him, and then it hits the dirt, and he has to leep high <laughs> that ball out of the sky. Otherwise, it's on into center field, oh. and uh, that made a big difference. We have seen some funny hops off of this infield. Two balls, two strikes. Here it is to Vinny, and it like a breaking ball that didn't have a whole lot of break on it. Stays outside the count, three and two. So Galetti bounced out four to three in the first. Did pick up an RBI following the infield hit and the stolen base by Garcia. Walked in the second, picked up an RBI double in the fourth. Here's one to the right side and past the diamond dugout. Count remains 3-2 and two to Vinny Galetti. Can you stand some good news? Yes. Bottom of the tenth, San Rafael 5, Sonoma 3. Oh, okay. It was either that or they were starting to sell pizza, the Mary's Pizza down at the uh, <laughs> concession a, stand. That was the other good news I was thinking about. Some good pizza at Sonoma. Those burgers are good, the though, by the way. <laughs> Swinging a foul by Vinny back to the screen. I, I had a good hot dog here. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed my hot dog. You can go down there and there's like pickles and tomatoes and stuff that you can put on it. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, not uh, you know looking forward to going back to Sonoma. That's going to be a great series with the Stoppers and the Diamonds, but not looking to go up to our broadcast booth on that uh, ladder, however. And there's one down the left field line. That is in there for extra bases. Galetti rounds first. He'll race into second. And he's got himself his second double of the evening. And Vinny now two out of three with a walk. So a good afternoon, a good evening, I should say, for Vinny. And he's on board now for Wes Wallace. Now, Galetti came into the game tied for the RBI lead in the league with 38 with uh Jake Taylor. Taylor, I don't know what he's done tonight, but Galetti has an RBI, so he's up to 39. Galetti has a pair tonight. Two RBIs. So uh, that means he's up to 40. Kind of typical. A couple yes. of hits for Vinny. Couple of, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't do it with a lot of flash either. Somehow, I don't know how you could say that. He's hitting over 400. How do you hit over 400 without yeah, being amazing. flashy? I mean, it just seems like it's, all he does is get base hits. <laughs> it's amazing. It is an amazing thing to watch. keeps doing it. Swing and a miss by Wes Wallace. So Wes had a tough night, a couple of bounce outs to Fernacci at third in the first and the second, and then struck out in the fourth. Got a chance to pick up an RBI, and the Diamonds would be well suited to extend this lead because they saw how close the Admirals were to put, putting up a crooked number in that last half inning. Wallace waits, strike one pitch to him, bends him out of the way. Looked like uh, Wallace... Or Garcia took something off of that pitch. But ran it just off the inside part of the plate. The count one ball and one strike. There's Vinny getting his lead. Standing behind the field umpire, Danny Speck. 1-1 one, one pitch. Way inside. It's 2-1. and one. Oh. Bottom of the 10th, 5-4. San Rafael leading Sonoma. Can San Rafael hold on? A 2 1 pitch. Here it is. Swing, and that's going to be into left center field. That is going to get down for a hit. That gets away from the center fielder, Clark. And Vinny Galetti is going to score on the play. And into second is Wes Wallace. I. I now can tell you, we see, I see what people are saying about the field. I don't know what else to uh, attribute it to. Last night, Wallace has the ball bounce past him. You never see that. Tonight, Calderon did not pick up a ball in right field. That, that allows the runner to get an extra base. There, Clark has this ball. Looks like a normal single. The right center field bounce past him. He has to go uh, chase it down. And 
It doesn't look like uh, major bad hops. Well, the Wallace one might have been, but um, somehow the ball's getting by. It's got to be something. These guys can usually make those plays. It doesn't seem to be getting that uh, routine hop that you see everywhere else. Swinging that one's hard hit. That's going to be passed. The diving Rodriguez at first base. Here comes Wallace around third. He will score. Calderon motoring into second. It's an RBI double, and the Diamonds restoring order here, and it's 8-1. to one. <laughs> There is that. We went through the lineup there. We said Google Eddie's hitting over 400. Wallace and Calderon over 300. What a, what a great lineup it is to have these three up there. One, two, three, and this inning they have shown it. Double and a run scored for Galetti. I'm thinking a double and an RBI and a run scored for Wallace. Double and an RBI for Calderon, and they are chasing Garcia here in the seventh inning. Garcia got the only one, two, three inning of the night for uh, the uh, Vallejo pitcher's last inning, and then he walks up here and gets falls into a meat grinder. Pitch to Marta Correa inside for a ball. So it had to be a bit of a letdown for the Admirals, although they were able to get off the snide in terms of the no-hitter in that last inning. But the fact they only got the one run, Scott, had to kind of be a bit of a letdown. Here's the pitch, and Marta Carena checks his swing, takes a ball, and it's 2-0. and A walk-off, two-RBI single by Yuki Yasuda <laughs> in the bottom of the 10th, and the stoppers win 6-5. to five. Really? Mr. Yasuda, who hit the ball over the left field fence in a line drive home run again yeah. over the weekend. But, my goodness. Stompers Stomp, are to do it again. And the pitch, and Marty swings and pops this one up foul. Right side, Rodriguez, does he have room? Coming over, leeching up, and he runs out of room. It's a foul ball. And I'd like to make it clear that Tim Fitzgerald was the bearer of bad news. <laughs> the, uh, the, the main man here for the uh, Admirals. And... Uh, so he was sharing that information with us because he knew that we were trying to stay on top of that one. As Sandra Fell looked like they might do the league a favor, but no. But, <laughs> but did you have to call the Psychic Friends Network to kind of know that was going to happen? <laughs> did Dion Warwick need to tell you that? <laughs> they always do that. Two balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. Swung on. That's hit hard oh. into center field. Clark going back. And he's got plenty of room out there. He makes the catch several steps ahead of the warning track. Calderon heads up. He tags up at second base and moves on over to third. That was a, that was the fastest I've seen Calderon run. He, he really moved from second to third on that play. So Marta Carena flies out to center. And Marty actually hit that ball pretty hard. It had a little bit of a loop to it. And turn into a fairly routine play for Chevy Clark. And here's Batista now. Speaking of hitting it hard. <laughs> yeah. Picking up, I believe that was his first home run as a diamond. Batista now uh, trying to get Calderon home from third with one out. The infield playing in now to try to cut off that run. They, as uh, Batista takes a strike, they trail it 8-1. to one, And they know they can ill afford to give up any more runs here as... Garcia has run into trouble here in the seventh after pitching a scoreless sixth inning. Here's the pitch. Swing. That wall is going to be popped up right side. Brandon Williams coming in. He's got to play. Makes the catch. Calderon gag. Come about a third of the way down the line and stop. And a nice throw from Brandon Williams. A couple of hops. That was way too shallow. Home play. That, that was way too shallow for a sacrifice fly. Yeah. And Calderon made the. The required fake. But he made the, <laughs> the accurate throw, which sometimes you see those guys, and the, the runner will come down from third, stop, and the throw will be so wide. Right. <laughs> gives the runner a chance. Go past to everybody, score anyway. and then they come in and score. And that's, of course, why you fake it. And, and uh, But that time. You make them throw the ball, absolutely. Williams on top of it. Two outs now. Swing. That ball's right at Garcia, who knocks it down, makes the play <laughs> without his glove. <laughs> And that was all about self-preservation that time. So that ball was absolutely rifled by McKeon. The Diamonds come up with a couple of more runs. And at the end of six and a half, it's the Diamonds eight and the Admirals one.
All right, the Diamonds have gone to the bullpen. It's going to be Justin Lawrence to come here to pitch the bottom of the seventh inning. The Diamonds lead 8-1. to one. Chris Vernacci will lead it off the third baseman, followed by Vlad Gomez, and then back to the top of the order for Brandon Williams. So the Diamonds were threatened an inning ago when the Admirals were able to pick up a base hit, played a run, were looking for more, didn't get any more, and then the Diamonds come back with two more to... Kind of bury him a little bit, but uh, still a ways to go in this game. The Diamonds, at times, as Scott and I have alluded to on a few occasions, have had trouble with the bullpen here, especially against the Admirals, and that pitch is inside for a ball. Justin Lawrence coming in 1-1, one one, a 4.29 earned run average in 10 games. 14 and two-thirds innings pitched. 12 strikeouts in that time, and yielded 15 hits. Six-foot right-hander, and now he kicks and fires, and Fernacci looks one low, and they count two balls and no strikes. Six-footer, 205 pounds, for 1991. Fernacci waits, and the pitch to him just out of the way a little bit to avoid getting hit. So Fernacci... Let off the third. He was out three unassisted. Walked in the fifth. So far, officially 0 for 1. Played a nice game defensively at third base for the Admirals tonight. Pitch to him is in there. A strike. And the count goes to three balls and one strike. So for Lawrence. The last outing, he got uh, one inning and gave up an earned run. That was the... 17-14 loss to the Stompers on July the 13th when the Diamonds were trying to chase down Sonoma at the end of the first half. Big swing of the miss, and the count goes 3-2. and two. In the Previous outing went a couple innings, and it's 6-5 to five loss to the Stompers the day before on the 12th. Didn't give up any runs that particular time. So he's coming off a couple of pretty decent outings. ERA not great, but uh, awful. There's a broken bat looper, and that is going to be a base hit over the outstretched glove of Jose Garcia, and that will be a base hit to lead off the inning for Fernacci. And here comes Vladimir Gomez. 
Not, not for a lack of trying by Garcia, who gave 100% effort trying to stop that from hit. But here comes a replay. If you're watching on Bay Area Sports TV, look at Garcia. Can't quite get there. Wasn't as close as maybe he wished it would have been, but he uh, couldn't stop. And now Fernacci at first. So the Diamonds are hoping this is not the start of something big here. They do have a comfortable lead right now. Eight-run lead here for Pittsburgh as we've gone to the home half of the seventh. And the pitch, and that was swung on and fouled back into the screen. As you've all heard, the Yuki Yasuda has come up with a huge hit to give the stoppers the win. They've taken the first two in that series in Sonoma against San Rafael. Play game three tomorrow up in Sonoma. And then they'll meet up with the Diamonds up north. Travis Blackley, who pitched so well last night, may be able to pitch on Sunday, according to Miles. Uh, and with Steyerwall pitching here tomorrow night, that would leave Neil and and we're not sure for the other bet starters. Big chopper. Garcia coming over. He fields it. Fires. Gets him as man. A Again, smart play. Just get an out here in this situation, and he does. Again, that hop. That hop is high enough to be a pop-up, <laughs> practically, and and the Garcia just has to wait for it to come to the earth before he can make the play. Certainly with an eight-run lead this late into the ball game, the Diamonds not all that worried about Chris Fernacci here. Just want to make sure they can get an out. And every now and then you'll see a, an infielder in a situation like that maybe take a peek over at the, the lead runner and see, right. well, do I have a play over here? And then... You lose the <laughs> the batter, right? And then before you know it, you got more guys on base. But Diamond's feeling pretty good thing about things right now. They've got to avoid that walkathon that they've had problems with. Here's the pitch, and that is to Brandon Williams, and is a called strike, and they count nothing in one. And that is music to their ears. That called strike. Throw the ball down the strike zone. Yes, it is. <laughs> and sometimes it's very elusive. Yep, even though you know, even even a, a single, even a hit, you know that's all right. Get in the strike zone. Let them. They're not gonna. Pitches outside here. They count one ball and one strike. And it just seems that when you give up those walks, Scott, over and over and over, and it's deep into the count, then the walk, deep into the count, then the walk, and then when it is hit, <laughs> one of the fielders, they just don't seem to be ready to field the ball. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Diamonds got four runs in that second inning, one hit. Walks and, and batters hit by pitches, errors. Right hit and batting, Williams waits. Here's the pitch and swung on it, missed strike two. So the Diamonds had that big inning in the second that got them started. Odomar Valdez coming up with that big hit. And it was really the Walk to Calderon. Bautista got hit by a pitch. McKeon got hit by a pitch. And what do you know? They all scored. Diamonds looking for their first victory of the second half. Timeout. Actually, I think uh, <laughs> Calderon was actually erased on the fielder's choice in that inning. So it was Marta Carena that scored, but he was on base because Williams had walked. And he had that fielder's choice that erased Calderon. Mm -hmm. and he you're right. Replace Calderon on the bases, but that's why he was on base initially. So here's a pitch, and that's off the outside corner. And, in fact, I remember in that play, there was Marty Carina got to second on an error, and so he was standing at second with one out. He said it was just like a sacrifice. That's right. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Brandon Williams. Ground out to second his first time, line to left in the third, struck out looking, leading off the sixth. Williams 0 for 3. Lawrence's pitch, and that's way up high for a ball. And Justin Lawrence, right now, not a guy who's just getting the ball and throwing it. He's really taking his time out there. There's a good look at Justin. It's that long look in. He's just, yeah. He is studying what the Keaton is sending him for signals, and I don't know if he doesn't like it or what, but no wonder the batter is taking time because 
And he doesn't move. <laughs> he is frozen. He's got his good Statue of Liberty pose right there. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes. Williams had enough waiting. He stepped out. Diamonds and the Admirals in game two of this second half of the 2017 season. Big swing and a miss, and Brandon Williams, second time tonight, has struck out. And he's 0 for 4 in this ball game as he head back to the dugout. And here's David Kiriakos, who came up with the uh, base hit back in the sixth inning. That uh, was the first base hit off of Mike Gunn that broke up the no-hitter. As far as uh, Justin Lawrence is concerned, that was worth the wait. <laughs> it took a long time to throw that pitch, but when it was delivered, it became strike three. There's the pitch by Lawrence to Kiriakos inside for a ball. So one on, two outs. Fernacci a base hit. Vladimir, Vladimir Gomez a ground out to the shortstop that allowed Fernacci to get to second. Williams is struck out. And here's Kiriakos trying to Get the Admirals on the board here. Big swing and a miss. And one that just kept drifting away from him that time. Ended up off the outside part of the plate. And Kiriakos can't hold up. He swings and misses in the count. One ball and one strike. The catcher, Mike Blank, would be next if Kiriakos can keep this one alive. Next pitch. And that is up high for a ball. And they count two balls and a strike. So been a good night all around for the Diamonds. Everything has gone according to plan. And the question is now, can they finish it up? Here's the pitch. Swung on it, missed strike two. Good fastball by Lawrence as he throws it by Kiriakos there. Here comes the 2-2 swing and a pop foul above the screen. Over the grandstand and out of play. Here's a good look at the diamond dugout over there in the background. See all diamonds here, home half of the seventh. They lead it 9-1. to one. Moving for a close-up shot. There's my gun out there on, on sitting on the rail. There's the pitch, and that ball is into right field. That's going to hop. Calderon, he juggles it a little bit. And into score comes Fernacci. I think he was probably going to score anyway on that. Running on contact with two outs. So it's a base hit for Kiriakos. He's got two hits tonight. A run scored on an RBI. So a nice uh, evening offensively for the former Diamond. And it's 9-2. to two. Here's Mike Blank as the inning continues. Still not really, a, and no threat here. They just got to keep throwing strikes. It looks like Angel Laura is up throwing in the Diamonds bullpen. Um, yeah, and uh, he would. Aaron Miles would like not to have to bring him in. It's, it's interesting though that we don't see Jordan Brink, although there's they're just too much of a lead to to bring in Brink, I think, and that rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> that is number fourteen, Angel Laura. Getting loose down there into the Diamond's pen. There's a swing and a foul pop-up. Alex McKeon giving it a look. Thinks oh. he has a play. Dives for it. Can't make the catch. In a way only Alex can do. <laughs> only Alex. I mean, that was a that was a head-first dive into the uh, morning track there next to the fence. Well, he's not going to get any style points, but he'll get an A for effort. But well, it is a unique style. <laughs> An interesting route going after that ball, kind of twisting after it, nearly made the play. Wow. I, that, he's lucky he didn't hurt himself. I mean, it just looked like he went, you know, did a, a face flop. Ouch. You know, the judges are probably not going to award him tens <laughs> on that one. But uh, he almost came up with a great play there. And the pitch. And this one hops up there.
a good look at Kiriakos aboard at first base, being held on by Galetti. So no hits was coming into the sixth. And uh, since then, they've collected four. Picked up a couple of runs. There goes Kiriakos. There's the pitch. And the throw down is not in time. It is going to get into center field. And Kiriakos is going to move up to third. And trailing by seven runs. And now the ball gets away. And here comes Kiriakos all the way home to score. So Kiriakos running wild on the bases. Justin Lawrence, very unhappy with that situation. Well, let me tell you what happened. I cannot believe that he did not swing at that pitch. I mean, he swung at the pitch. He had really broken his wrist, and, uh, and there was no, they called it a ball, and that would have been strike three. So it was a very odd, I, I, I don't know why that got away from everybody, but I was expecting him to be called out. Well, I was as surprised as the, I think the whole Diamonds were that uh, Kiriakos was even running in that situation, down by as many as they are. This led in the game, but he ends up scoring his second run of the game and well now it's nine to three still just the seventh inning two down base is empty and the pitch and that ball's hit well that could be trouble left side that's going to be just foul so mike blank nearly had himself extra bases just did miss that left field line by a couple of feet so the admirals even though they've uh, not get a particularly good starting pitching from David Dinelli. And then Garcia came out of the bullpen, had a one good inning, and then ran into some trouble of his own. But uh, they are not going quietly into this evening. It's still a six-run lead, and it's time just to throw strikes. You know, far from time to hit the panic button for the, the Diamonds, but you get a few guys on here, and... <laughs> that makes a different play, but, <laughs> yeah. but it's that walk. It's the walk. They're getting him on with the walk. Three balls and two strikes as that one misses low. Nick Akins waits on deck. Nick, as you know, the power guy here for the Admirals. He's 0 for 3 so far. The Admirals would certainly like to see him up in the seventh inning with a runner on base. Power guy and batting coach. Here's the pitch, and Blank checks his swing. Did he go? And they're going to say, yes, he went. There's a strikeout, and the inning is over. The Admirals do come up with a couple of runs, and at the end of eight, it's the Diamonds nine and the Admirals three.
All right, to the top of the eighth inning we go. New pitcher in for the Admirals. It's Jeff Daly. Begins his first season with the Admirals. And 2016, he's uh, with Lake Erie. Pitched in only three games for the Crushers out of Avon, Ohio, out of the Frontier League. Comes into this uh, season 0-0, zero and zero, just one game so far. 27 ERA. Yeah, not a good start, <laughs> but a very small, simple size yes. on the first pitch. A ball, one ball, and no strikes. Pitched and uh, played first base at Citrus High School in Florida. And the pitch to Garcia is a ball. Two balls and no strikes. So third pitcher used by B.J. Phillips Admirals here tonight. Garcia waits and the 2-0 pitch. And that is low for a ball. It's 3-0. and Dinelli five innings, seven runs. Garcia, a pair of innings, two runs. And now Jeff Daly... And for the Diamonds, Mike Gunn went six innings. Very strong innings. Gave up just the one run. Six Ks. Justin Lawrence came in for the seventh, and he has yielded a couple of runs. But, uh, it was a nine-run lead, and that is, you know, seems out there. Now you've picked up three runs. Six runs seems not impossible, especially having just scored three. And it is uh, the pitcher's responsibility here, Dally, to keep the Diamonds within six. Here's the pitch, ball four. So a four-pitch walk to Garcia sends him down to first base. And that'll bring up Valdez, who 0 for, or 1 for 3 overall the walk. But his uh, three RBI triple, a huge part of this ball game in the second. And he made that uh, fine play to turn away Grayland Durkee and the Admirals. That was in the sixth when it looked like the Admirals had a really good chance to get right back in the ball game and a tough hop. To, uh, Odomar was able to stay with that. And the Diamonds yielded just one run in the inning when it could have been at least a couple more. Here's the pitch, and that's an outside, or no, on the outside corner for a strike. And they count nothing in one. <laughs> So the Diamonds trying to add on here. There you see Garcia aboard at first base. And the pitch. It's way Ooh. inside for a ball. And the count one ball and one strike. There's a good the Admiral left-hander Jeff Daly. And the pitch. And that's way outside for a ball. Two balls and one strike. Diamonds added two runs to the lead in the seventh inning, and now you know they're very happy that they have them. And that's why here in the eighth, they would be happy to put a few more up just to make it a safer. Just to make sure. Two balls and a strike to Valdez. Here it is, and that's on the outside corner. A strike, and it's two and two. Good fastball that time by Dally to even up the count. No action now in the diamond bullpen. Actually, no, it looks like somebody is throwing down there. Two balls and two strikes to Odomar Valdez. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. And Valdez strikes out. So he is out number one, and that'll bring up B.J. Gwynn. And instead, it's to be J.J. Wagner coming into the ball game for B.J., so J.J. will come in. They so went to a left-handed pitcher. Diamonds decide to play the percentages here and go to the right-handed batter. So J.J. Wagner picking up for B.J. Gwynn here in the eighth. Pitch to him, and that is up high for a ball. J.J. just activated today and put on the roster again. He had been uh, inactive for a little while, but, of course, he will always be remembered for that walk-off home run against San Rafael. The big highlights of that first half of the Diamonds. Here's the pitch. Swing, and it's going to be a shot out right field. And then giving chase, reaching up, and making the catch is Brandon Williams for out number two. And Williams had to go a ways to get that ball and able to track it down and make the play. So that is the second out of the inning as Wagner flies to right. And here's Vinny Galletti, and well, a typical Vinny Knight. Couple of doubles, 
Couple of RBIs, a walk, and a run scored. Ho hum, another day at the <laughs> office for Vinny. Two for three, even if he goes two for four, it's going to keep his average going up instead of down. The pitch is in there for a strike, and they count nothing in one. Hitting 419 coming into the game. That'll work. No. <laughs> that will get it done. That's good. I mean, that's good for like fast pitch softball. Yeah. Strike one pitch of any. There goes the runner. and This one is going to be inside. Garcia going to take the turn at second and hold on there with a stolen base. So he was certainly going before the ball got away. So he'll get credit for his second stolen base of the ball game. He was getting some good information because he didn't slide into second. He knew that there was a chance something else might happen. He kept rounding for second and headed for third. Held on, but uh, he knew someone was telling him the ball had gotten past. That kind of also tells you the Diamond's not thinking this lead is necessarily completely secure. <laughs> I mean, they're running with a six-run lead here in the eighth. Trying to get some more. Pitch to Vinny, and he checks his swing. Yes, he did. Takes low for a ball. Count two balls on a strike. Tyler Steyerwall will get start tomorrow for the Diamonds, which I don't want to jinx anything here, but looks like will be the rubber match. Not safe for sure. Diamonds are hoping. Swung on it, missed. It's two and two. Good fastball that time. That ran away from Galetti, and Vinny swung right through. And the count evens at two balls and two strikes. A look inside the Diamond dugout. There's Jaku Calderon and shaking his helmet. something out of his helmet. <laughs> What's out of my helmet? BJ Gwynn had something funny to say. Galetti up the middle, grabbed by the second baseman. Gomez on the backhand, he throws to first to get him. And the inning is over, and that'll do it for the top of the inning. To the bottom of the eighth we go. The Diamonds still in control at 9-3. Right to the bottom of the eighth we go. It's the Diamonds nine, the Admirals three. New pitcher for the Diamonds. Their third of the ball game. It'll be the left-hander Angel Lara. Two and two with a 529 earned run average, nine games. He started a couple of games. 17 innings pitch, 15 strikeouts, 15 walks. He's yielded 22 hits. And he'll begin the inning with Nick Akins. It'll be Ryan Rodriguez, the first baseman, and then Chevy Clark. 
And should anybody reach, we'd see Grayland Turkey. Big swing and a hammered ball left side. Way, way back, but way, way foul. And it's just a loud strike one. Angel Laura has flirted with a start position with the Diamonds. Started a couple of games and, and came through for them with nice performances. But now is back in a relief situation. And this is your ultimate cleanup situation. Diamonds by six. Two innings left here. Next pitch is outside ball one. One ball and one strike. A couple of strikeouts. No doubt for Aiken so far. So he's been a bit frustrated tonight. Here's the next pitch. Swing and he fouls this one off. The count one and two. And last night, Nick, 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. So he struck out five times so far in this series and has yet to get hit. Here's the pitch to Nick, and swinging a ground ball and a hop, and you talk about a kangaroo bounce <laughs> over the head of Bautista there at third base. So Akins is going to get himself a base hit. He hit the ball hard, but boy, I don't know what's going on with this infield, but there are not a lot of clean bounces. No, and it just, well, here's another replay, and it goes to the left side, and you can see, you can see the end of Bautista's efforts to get the ball, and it goes in the left field. He, uh, he just never had a chance with that hop. Not even close. So leadoff man is on here, and the pitch, and that is inside for a ball. Ryan Rodriguez, strikeout victim, leading off the second. Grounded out to Garcia. That was in the fourth, and he walked in the sixth. Lefty-righty matchup, swing and a miss, and they count one ball and one strike. Most so, frustrating for Angel Laura, who, you know, it's like you've got the guy on the ground out to third and then boom, the ball's in the field. Yeah, even though he did hit it hard, it still looked like that was a one that would be played. Here's a pitch that's a bit low. <laughs> Count two balls and one strike. So Laura coming in with that 529 ERA. End of the game, July 16th at Sonoma. Eight to one loss for the Diamonds. Two thirds of an inning there gave up one run. There's a strike in there, and the count evens at two and two. And the previous to that, you got to go all the way back to July the sixth at Sonoma, and a six to five win. He went an inning there, gave up three, one earned on two hits. Certainly would like to get this ERA down. There goes the runner, swing and a miss, no throw down to second base. So Aikens will pick up a stolen base. The Diamonds don't mind that so much. Ryan Rodriguez strikes out. They do not that. As they get the first out of the inning, here comes Clark. Last time, McKeon threw the ball to, to, to get a runner. It went into center field. The runner didn't stop running until he slid into home plate with a score. So here's Clark now. One on, one out. And he takes a ball. And now McKeon wants to go out and talk it over with the diamond left-hander. One on, one out. Diamonds lead it by six. We're in the eighth. Here's the pitch way up high for a ball. Now one ball and one stick. Diamonds off to a good start tonight. Have been able to hold on for the most part. I got to Dinelli for seven runs. Here's the pitch, and that is just off the outside part of the plate. They count two balls and a strike. And a Laura needs to throw strikes. He's like... Uh, walk here and you get, uh, it's just, you know, we've all been through the, the script. <laughs> we've seen the script come to life. Raylan Durkee would be next. Clark waits, the pitch to him is swung on, popped foul and out of play, and the count went two. Diamond's looking for those guys that can give them solid performances out of the bullpen. When you're kind of a, when you've got a, a roster, it's, you know, constantly evolving, but uh, you'd like to see a, a slow motion rather than, oh, God, we got to break this whole thing down and start over. 
Two balls and two strikes, and this one just does miss, and the count goes full now, three and two. Clark was stranded at third on that play by Valdez that, on that high bounder almost over his head when the bases were loaded that could have caused all sorts of problems. <clears throat> Valdez made the play, and now he's up here trying to get on base again and cause more problems. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good fastball by Angel Lara, and that takes care of Chevy Clark. So he gives up the to Aikens on that bad hop, and then he strikes out Ryan Rodriguez, strikes out Chevy Clark, and here's Durkee now with one on and two out here in the eighth. So this is the look in the background, and you see the skipper there with his arms folded. There he is. Here's the pitch, and that is up high for a ball. Well, you know what he's saying, throw strike. <laughs> he's rel he looks relaxed, though. <laughs> Turkey, the subject of great consternation at the beginning of the game, but... Uh, he remained in the lineup. Big swing and a miss there to even the count at one and one. Diamond's protesting that the Admiral's first baseman, Rodriguez, had been listed as a DH and came out to play. And then they said, well, that means that the DH is now on the field and they have to play a National League baseball game. They've lost the DH. They have pitcher has to hit. But uh, apparently the umpire did not rule in their favor. That's not what Mark Beller came out with. There's a strike. Durkee was the man who would have been taken out of the lineup because that would have where the pitcher would have had to hit because because of the way the, they, he was now the team supposed to DH. It's very confusing. But the fact that Durkee is batting is an indication that the Diamonds lost that argument. Swing and a miss, and down goes Durkee. Three strikeouts to end the inning here after giving up the base hit, and that will do it for the eighth inning. We'll go to the ninth inning. The Diamonds lead it, score of 9-3. to three. All right, to the ninth we go. The Diamonds lead it 9-3. to three. New pitcher is Tim Holmes for the Admirals, who comes in with uh, no record, a 6.48 ERA in 11 games, 16 and two-thirds innings pitched. Yielded 19 hits, 19 walks, and uh, all seven hits. Uh, he starts out here with Wes Wallace. As the Diamonds trying to add on to a six-run lead, here's the pitch to West oh, on the outside corner of strike. And Tim Holmes signed by the New York Yankees after his stellar start to the 2016 season. 14 games with one of the Yankees' farm teams. 
Pitch that's low, one ball and one strike. Worked 15 and a third. Striking out 15 and an ERA of .59. There's one that's in there for a strike in the count one and two. He last worked this year, July the 13th, at San Rafael. A scoreless inning. Before that, July the 11th at San Rafael. And there's a pitch. That's a strike. And down goes Wes Wallace on strikes. And that's how the ninth inning starts. Wes Wallace having what has become a typical night. He has two strikeouts and he has a double. <laughs> and he scored a run. So you figure it all out. But... Uh... Holmes is ERA quite high right now, but last year with the Admirals had a very nice season. Swing and Jaku hits one into left center field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. So Calderon has uh, a walk, a two, an RBI double, and now a base hit in tonight's game. So Calderon had himself a nice day offensively. Last year in just first innings pitched for Holmes for these Admirals. Struck out 30 in that uh, time and finished with a 1 0 record and a 125 earned run average. I'm sure they're thinking that he's going to be able to turn this season around and put up numbers in the second half that he did in the first pitch. And that uh, ball is fouled off by Marta Carena. And the count nothing and one to Marty. Now Marta Carena. Bounced into a 5-4 fielder's choice. Ended up scoring. That was in that second inning when the Diamonds put up the four spot. He got a base hit in the third. And then popped a short and flew out to left since. Takes a strike here. And the count nothing and two to Javier Martacarena. Bautista waits. Oh, one out or one on and... One on, one out here in the ninth inning. And that uh, ball is low. One ball and two strikes. Calderon aboard at first. Admirals would like to turn the double play and get back into the dugout here, trailing by six and looking for what uh, would be, well, let's just say, kind of a miracle comeback at this point. Here's the pitch, and a swing and a miss on a changeup that just died. And Marta Carena is out number two. So a pair of strikeouts here for Tim Holmes in the inning. And now comes up Gerald Bautista, hit by a pitch, and homered here today. Home run here tonight, triple last night. Three hours and 45 minutes of baseball. That's it? Almost. Three hours and actually 40 minutes of baseball. Oh, it's just flown by. <laughs> Here's the pitch, swing, and a foul back. And if Aaron Miles has any gripes with the uh, umpires the rest of the way, I would wait till the game was over to have those conversations. <laughs> well, uh, uh, three, all three hours and 40 minutes can't be blamed on him. <laughs> <laughs> swing and a foul back to the screen. Nine diamond runs. You got, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> it did seem like the first part of the ball game we were doing when we were playing. You are correct. <laughs> so a strikeout for Wallace, a base hit for Calderon, a strikeout to Marta Carena. And Bautista trying to do some more damage to his former team. Flies this one into right field. Williams coming up, reaches up, makes the catch. The inning is over, and we will go to the bottom of the ninth. The Diamonds holding a 9-3 lead, trying to win this second game and send us to tomorrow's action for the rubber game. Diamonds lead it 9-3.
To the bottom of the ninth we go. The Diamonds lead it 9-3, to three, trying to even up this series at one apiece and get us to tomorrow for what would be the rubber match of this three-game set with Vallejo. 6.30 start time, first pitch tomorrow. And the Diamonds trying to wrap things up here. Angel Lara in his second inning of work, and the first pitch is in there for a strike to Chris Fernacci. Got a base hit his last time. So Chris officially one for two with a walk today. Let off the third assisted, walked in the fifth, and the pitch is popped up. And this will be the center fielder, Wes Wallace, ranging over, reaches up, makes the catch, and one down here in the ninth. So here's Vladimir Gomez. And then it would be the order for Brandon Williams. Gomez I don't know how Vladimir is going to do, but I like his walk-up music. <laughs> that was a happy song. Now, Glo Gomez stands in. Lara's pitch, and that is on the outside corner of strike. So Travis Blackley finished with 11 strikeouts last night. Diamond's pitching overall between... Gunn, Lawrence, and Angel Lara have 11 tonight. Wow. Swinging a ground ball foul to third. Here we go. And here comes Thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, I blew it at the beginning of the game when we had the, the Adams family theme, and I said cousin it when I met Thing. Thing. That one is inside for a ball. I'm a big enough man. Wow. <laughs> a, guy, a man who can admit his mistakes. One ball, two strikes to Vladimir. Here's the pitch. Swings, ball gets away, rolls away. McKeon chases it down, fires over to first. Vinny is off the base, though, when he makes the catch. So it's going to be, a, but a wild pitch will allow Vladimir Gomez to reach. So take another look at it here on BayAreaSports.tv. Gomez swung and missed. The ball just kind of hit the ground, you know, bounced away a little bit. McKeon was able to chase it down, fire onto first, but... His throw pulled off the bag, so the Diamonds get strikeout number 12, but they do not record the out. McKeon has a, had trouble with those throws to first base. He uh, last night hit a batter in the back of the ball. A uh, guy running to first base in the back with the ball. Tonight he pulls Galetti off the base here. Well, the Diamonds trying to finish this one off. They lead it by six. Their big inning was back in the second when they put up four. There goes the runner, and this will be defensive indifference, so no stolen base awarded to Vladimir as he trots into second base. Uh, you know, if you had to see McKeon to understand the exact term defensive indifference. He couldn't have, <laughs> he he couldn't couldn't have cared have less. less. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Swinging a ground ball. That's going to be past the third baseman, Bautista. And here comes Gomez to score. And trotting into for, into second base is Brand RBI double, and it's nine to four. So here comes David Kiriakos, who's had a good night. A couple of base hits, a couple of runs scored, and an RBI for Kiriakos on the evening. He's also flown to right and bounced back to the pitcher. So official two for four for the former Diamond. He was on at first when, and ran for second when the throw went to second and on into the outfield, and he kept running and running and running, and he scored a run. As the Diamonds threw the ball all over the place, <laughs> uh, not to anyone in particular because it kept going beyond where it was supposed to go. Kiriako spanks this one in. Comes Wallace who makes the catch, tosses behind the runner, but uh, Williams will get back in safely. So here's Mike Blank now, walk. Bounce out to third, base hit, and a strikeout for Mike. Two outs as Kiriakos flies out to center field. So Blank trying to keep this one going for Nick Akins. One on, two out, one in. Here's the pitch. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. Garcia, oh, this again. one's going to bounce right over his head and into center field for a... Here comes Williams to score, and it's 9-5. to five. 
So the plot thickens here as we just cannot quite put the Admirals away, and we've seen this act before. It is, well, we have, but we have never seen it in quite this way. That ball taking another bizarre hop. I mean, just how high can the ball bound? Doesn't seem like it can get that high. It's lost its energy. Here's the replay. Here it comes. And it hits the ground, and watch it go over Garcia's head, and it would not do that in any other infield that we've seen. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a ground ball out to the shortstop. The Diamonds, with that bad hop, can not get the out there. They picked up strikeout number 12 when going, but uh, when the ball got away, he was able to reach base. So there's a ball high now to Nick Akins. The unmistakable so, stance of Nick Akins with that ball pointed, the uh, bat pointed at the pitcher, and... It looks like he's just going to hit the ball from here to across the bay. But. It's the Nick Big swing and a miss. Nakins a base hit his last time. Had been struggling quite a bit in the series. Prior to that, it struck out five times and was without a hit until picking up that base hit in the eighth. Big swing and a miss there, and now the Admiral's down to their last strike. So Angel Lara trying to finish it here. Nine to five now, as the Admirals have added a couple of more runs here in the inning. And remember, they had nothing going into the sixth. Here's the pitch, and swung on. Did he check his swing? No, he didn't. He is out with the strikeout. That is a baker's dozen on the strikeouts for Diamonds pitching, and the ball game is over. And the Diamonds win it by a final score of nine to five. And uh, even though the Admirals were able to come back here a little bit, they certainly did not give up. But uh, a lot of things went right for the Diamonds thing, starting with uh, a good outing for Mike Gunn. Six innings pitched, one run, and six strikeouts. He was uh, really on his game and did a wonderful job. Everything they could have asked for him. Mean, he went deep into the game and uh, had a great performance. He will be now counted, of course, among the great uh, positive for the second half. Diamonds, importantly, are now 1-1. One and one. When they started out 0-3 last time, they've changed that. That's another good thing. And uh, they come back here for the chance to win a series before they head to Sonoma for the big weekend series. So things are looking good. Entire Styler wall on the mound tomorrow. But the Diamonds had good relief pitching, good starting pitching. They got a big lead. up giving up five runs. And, you know, if they hadn't had nine uh, on their side, this would have been a very tight game at the end. And that's not exactly what they want so uh, it's, you know there there's not exactly the finish nine to two it's, it's at one point it was seven to two they went to nine to two and now it's nine to well, five you know and, the admirals don't you know, the admirals know have a runner on them. and their big hitter at the plate i mean it just it, it had all the elements but this time they pulled out the victory and you know it's not worth being all negative about it when you got a victory and you're one-on-one and, and you're looking to win the series tomorrow feeling pretty good it was Odomar Valdez with a three RBI, two out, two strike, triple. But got the night was back in the second inning, one of the uh, key moments of the ball game. And then he had another key moment on the four unassisted play on off the bat of Graylin Durkee when uh, it looked like the ball took a bad hop, was going to go into right center field, score a couple of more runs. Remember, the Admirals had already added a run. That was back in the sixth inning in a very close game. But Odomar was able to stay with it and make the play. And uh, still looking back, at those probably the two key plays of the ball game. And uh, you got to go on to the seventh inning. Why do people think the Diamonds have the best lineup in the league? Vinny Galetti doubles, Wes Wallace doubles, Jaku Calderon doubles. <laughs> Two-run score and nail-biter at the end. It's 9-5, to five and they have a little bit of uh, breathing room, and they come home, they leave with a win, and they come back tomorrow night for, hopefully, uh, they think, a chance to leave here with two victories. Tyler Steyerwalt will be on the hill for the Diamonds. That does it for us here for Diamonds Baseball. For all of us here with the Diamond McDonald, I'm Anthony Schultz. We'll see you tomorrow night right here from... Uh, from the Admirals ballpark, the 6.35 will be the start time first pitch, and we'll be on the air on Mixler.com and also on Bay Area Sports TV. So catch all the action for the rubber match of this three-game series tonight, everybody. <laughs>